Many organizations with increased demands for storage performance have discovered that solid-state drive devices can deliver data at phenomenal speeds while also saving energy. Since SSDs have no moving parts, they ensure great resistance to physical damage in harsh conditions, and the fact that SSDs do not use traditional magnetic storage makes them run more quietly, have lower access time, and offer less latency than electromechanical disks. Many of today's IT departments are tasked with reducing energy costs and supporting green operations. SSDs can help. Hey there, everyone. James Hilliard here, and on this Connect with Experts Connection Point podcast, Louis Kaneshiro is with a senior technology manager at Kingston Technology. He's going to be sharing his expertise with us today, talking about what you should be considering about SSD, talk about where it is advancing. Louis, really do appreciate you taking time and joining us today. Thanks for having me, James. Hey, let's start off with how long you have actually had a front row seat to this SSD evolution. Well, I've been lucky. I mean, at Kingston, it's been since its inception. I mean, we started looking at it probably as far back as 2006, 2007, 2008, it began to make a lot more sense. You know, I mean, we're, we make upgrades, right? I mean, we've been in the memory business now 26 years, I think it is. You know, we had been doing USB and CF and other flash-based storage, you know, and uh, we'd been asked uh, by, by many, many customers, when are you going to do SSDs? And, you know, I think we were waiting for uh, the right time, I, I think, when we thought adoption rate would be uh, would be a little bit better. Um, and so, yeah, it's been, wow, I guess so that's probably about six or seven years now total. I mentioned in the introduction, Lewis, some of the characteristics, right? Solid state drives, no moving parts. That's one of the characteristics there. Give us the rest of the overview of SSD technology. If you think about what we've been using the last 40 years plus, it's really been a mechanical hard drive, right? It's got platters and arm, you know, the, the data is recorded magnetically. And, you know, the hard drive has been great. I think they still are. I think what, what SSDs kind of bring, you know, essentially, if you're looking at our two and a half inch SSD or any ones, it looks just like a hard drive, essentially, the same mounting holes and all of that. But, you know, if you were to take that cover off, what you would see is a bunch of flash memory and a flash controller and a SATA controller. Usually those two are kind of built into one. So just like you said, no moving parts, silent operation. The great thing is, you know, we've all you know, we've all grown accustomed to our hard drives and, you know, that, that the clicking noise they make when you, you hear data being searched for, when the drives are fragmented, you know, none of that happens with SSDs. And so it's very durable, you know, as you can imagine, you know, very shockproof. Uh, we did a, a series of videos when we first launched our SSDs where, we hit them with baseball bats and bowling balls and all of that. You can go to our YouTube channel uh, and actually see some of those. And you can see that the SSDs are much, much more durable than a hard drive. When SSDs hit the market, you know, mid-2000s, as you talked about, some resistance to adoption. Is there still any of that, or is SSD really kind of hitting its stride? Is it ready for prime time? Is that what customers are thinking these days? You know, that's a good question. I would say if we're talking from the organizational perspective, I would say the biggest roadblock was price, you know, um, in the very beginning. When I first started, you know, we were looking at, geez, you know, 6 or $7 a gigabyte. So a 100 gig, you know, SSD or so was literally around 6 or $700, which was, you know, about the same price of the laptop that they were putting it in. You know, I think that was probably the, the biggest objection early on. And I think the rest of it has just been kind of, you know, I think as, as, as the industry has, has kind of moved forward and, you know, I think they've got a better understanding of what flash technology can bring, you know, to the enterprise, to the consumer space, to the mobile user as well. Lewis, let's move forward, focus on SSDs and their performance advantages over those traditional hard disk drives. Again, with no moving parts, right? You know, I think one of the things with hard drives is always seek time, right? You know, and, you know, we all know hard drives get fragmented, right? Your data gets kind of spread around all over the place. And so, you know, if we were to look at a couple of things, you know, I guess let's just take a look at bandwidth. You know, I would say a fast hard drive, right, if we're talking about maybe something that spins at 10 or 15,000 RPM, is going to be able to do maybe in the neighborhood of 150 megabytes to, to 200 megabytes a second sequential bandwidth, which, which is not bad. That's actually a very fast hard drive. I would say if we're looking at your typical notebook drive, we're in there probably 40 to 50 megabytes a second, right? Um, an SSD, you know, even, our, even our, if we're talking our consumer line SSD, our, our entry level, you know, we're, we're writing data at close to four to 500 megabytes a second, right? So, um, you know, you're talking about a four, you know, anywhere from a four to 10x improvement right there. But really, I think where SSD shine is in the random performance. And we measure that in IOPS, uh, input, output per second. You know, again, a, a fast hard drive, you know, I'm talking SAS class enterprise level stuff, is probably around 300 IOPS, 
you know, our baseline SSDs started about sixty to seventy thousand IOPS. So, um, you know, it's it's amazing. I mean, you know, if we're just looking at random operation, you know, one SSD can do the work of you know hundreds of hard drives, really. Again, with no moving parts, you know, we're able to, you know, it's it's a little bit of a cross between, you know, DRAM, you know, how we have that fast random access with DRAM, right? We're not we're not looking all over a DRAM module for where a, a certain chunk of data is. You know, SSDs work the same way. I want to take some time talk some adoption here. Tier one, tier three storage. Where does today's SSD technology fit into today's data centers? The biggest gain that we see is really more in a DAS setup, right? Direct attached storage. You know, I think SSDs in the SAN, you know, I, I think are fine. And we're starting to see many, many vendors, um, you know, that are basically putting out a box with tiered storage, right? If we look at some of the, the larger guys, the HPs and the Dells, there's been some acquisitions of that technology. And that's what you see, right? Um, I know you'll, you'll see a, a box that's got a combination of um, spinning disk you know, faster spinning disk, and then SSD is on the top. So in that kind of tier one storage, right, where the, the storage is kind of temporary, right, what you need is you need to put your hottest, most frequently used data in flash, right, and that's where you'll see, uh, I got SQL speed up. You'll see, you know, we see a lot of companies now that are doing virtualization, right? I mean, VMware is, you know, um, at this point, it's no longer a, a – kind of try it and see, right? I think any any organization that's not doing some kind of virtualization is really falling behind. And, you know, when you start to stack up those VMs, you know, you're going to need more and more IOPS out of your storage solution, and that's where Flash uh, makes a lot of sense, and that's where we've probably seen the biggest adoption. So it's at that kind of kind of tier one storage, you know, essentially where it's temporary, right? When, when the data becomes archival, it's not going to be uh, used any longer, you know, then at that point we'll go ahead and, and put that in spinning disk. You know, a, a good example I like to use is Facebook, right? Um, you know, when you're on a Facebook page, you know, as, as you're looking at kind of the most recently, you know, uh, post, right, from friends or whatever you're looking at, you know, everything there is, is very quick, right, you know, as, as you scroll down. But you get to the point where you're starting to scroll down into your older post, right, you'll see that take a, a little bit of time to come up, right? Um, it, it's usually a little slower, you know, that's probably coming from a little bit slower storage at that point, right? What what Facebook is showing you is the most recent stuff, right? That would be the kind of the equivalent analogy of that. That's what I want in Flash, what I need to look at right now, essentially. All right, Lewis, final two questions here. The first, what architectural changes within the data center, the network, need to be done by an IT shop to really help facilitate SSD adoption, deployment? Oh, that's a great question. You know, you know, it's something that we used to ask. You know, I think three or four years ago, we used to ask this question of our kind of corporate customers, right? We used to ask, you know, is the performance of your IT solution tied to revenue, right? You know, I'm talking the new eggs, right, and the eBays, you know, essentially, right, a lot of the online transaction stuff. And then the second question, which kind of highlights what you just asked, is, you know, is your infrastructure set up to do this, right? And I, I think that was an important one. You know, I, I've, I've got friends that work at Brocade and Juniper and some of the networking guys, and it's funny what they tell me now. Flash, te flash technology in general, I, I, you know, I, I guess really talking about SSDs in this case, have really kind of pushed them, you know, to widen that pipe, right? You know, how, how can they get data through there even quicker, essentially? So, um, you know, I, I think to, to answer your question, I think we're seeing that now already. Um, for, from the customers that we're speaking with, um, you know, they're already they're already making some changes to their infrastructure to accommodate, you know, that speed, right? Um, so, yeah, it, it's it's happening now. And let's do a wrap here with a little sneak peek, right? What's coming down the road for SSD technology? Well, I would say probably the biggest change is, is the form factors and, and some of the interface, right? So, you know, when SSDs first launched, you know, there was kind of SATA, right, and SAS. And I think SATA provided us a way for us to get our heads around the idea of SSDs. It looks like a hard drive. It acts like a hard drive, right? And so, you know, it uses the SATA interface. There's no drivers needed, right? You know, adopting an SSD it was fairly simple. I think really what we're going to see next is the move to PCI Express. And, and why that's a big deal is that, you know, if we're looking at SATA or even SAS, we're kind of tapped out at about 600 megabytes per second, right? Our our entry level SSD is already capable of, of basically stuffing, you know, a SATA 3 uh, interface, and so PCI Express is really going to move the, the the flash storage even closer to the processor, right? So think of it almost like DRAM, right? Where you know th there's there's direct memory access by the CPU. We want to do that with with any flash based storage and SSDs. We want to get away from SATA. So PCI Express, we've already demoed. Uh, um, some PCI Express SSDs working at nearly 2,000 megabytes a second, right? So when we were talking about performance earlier, 
know, we're talking about a 3x jump in performance. And so I think really that's what you're going to see. You're, you're going to see, I think, in the future, SSDs looking a lot less like the two and a half inch SSDs that we've seen and looking a lot more like a video card, for example, you know, simply with a PCI Express interface. It'll look a lot more like a module, actually. And so that's what we're really excited about. I think for enterprise especially, you know, um, we're able to now, we have customers that will stack SSDs on, on SSDs, you know, behind a RAID controller to get speed which is great, but they're going to be able to do that now with basically one card. And so that's going to be available at the enterprise level, but even at the consumer level. And so, you know, we're talking about, you know, the the next generation notebooks with PCI Express will have SSDs in there that are writing, you know, well over 1,000 megabytes a second. Hey, Lewis, great place for us to stop, plenty to look forward to, and of course, plenty to take advantage of today in terms of SSD technology. So thank you for those insights. Folks, if you want more information about SSDs and technologies available from Kingston, then turn to the PC Connection family of companies. You can contact your account manager today to learn more about beginning your next IT project with an assessment, as well as engaging their on-staff experts. You can learn more online at pcconnection.com, or you're invited to call 1-800-800-0014. If you'd like to email us, please do. It is connect at pcconnection.com. With that, we're going to wrap things up. Once again, I'm James Hilliard. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Connection Point.